I've lived here my whole life. I didn't really have a father figure in my life. It was me and my mom for the first five or six years of my life. Then my mom met her first and only husband. So then I thought, okay, I don't want a father figure was. Then that turned out to be a mistake because the man, the man who I, the earthly man who I thought was supposed to protect me, turned out to take advantage of me from the age of six to thirteen. Going into my teenage years, I knew about God and Christianity. But I was, I was, you know, I was ignoring them because I had no guidance. And my mom, God bless her, she would try, but I would, she could only do so much. So I was left to fend for myself. Boyfriends would come in and out, but nothing serious or concrete. Um, I had my first cigarette at the age of 17, which then turned into my first high school party. From the age of 17 to 21, I would go on, I would go on drinking binges. By the time I would turn 23, 24, a good, my good patriarch friend, who I drank and partied with, he had passed away, and I had gotten out of his memorial services, and I followed what most of his family did after the fact and went on another drinking binge. At that point, I had woke up the next day with beer cans surrounding my bed and I realized that I needed help. Hmm. I attended, I, I sought out and found a, a worldly AA meeting that didn't help. Then I tried to kick the hammock by myself. That didn't work. I had moved in with my cousin and his first wife. And then I got into the prescription pills and recreational drug use. I was at, at that was for three, I did a three year bid for that. Then I called, I reached out and called for help from an ex. I needed to get out of that situation without hesitation. Her mother said, okay, let me talk to my husband. Her husband said, okay, but these are the conditions. I said, okay. And that lasted for about two years because one of the conditions were that I would go to church, that I was obligated to go to church. So at that point, I started to get serious, but then it wasn't, I wasn't as serious as, as I am now because I was obligated to go. I wasn't, it wasn't an option. That kind of soured me real quick. So I then left their house and got my own apartment and went back to the recreational drug use and was left on my own to, to fend for myself, to do my own thing, no guidance. Mm -hmm. But then, between the ages of 31 and 33, I picked up the alcohol again. I was at an emotional crossroad at that point. My life was an emotional wreck at that point. At this point, I didn't know which way was up or down. Uh, I just knew that I needed help. Recently, I attended a de-stress seminar, which was in, which I had gotten an invitation to, and I believe that, and I believe that that was the best move that I could have ever possibly made because 
since then I have been, been able to hear, seek, and see God more clearly than I've ever been in my 30, 33 years almost 34 now that I've been on this earth and I owe it to those people because if it wasn't for them I wouldn't be here standing in front of you guys telling my sharing my story I'd still be in my box my little box at home you know so if I could you know if I could sum it up I would just say for those of you that know God God bless you because it's the greatest thing. I know it's changed. He's changed me. Amen. And I wouldn't ask if I could do it all over again. I would in a heartbeat. And for those that may not know God, that's here, give him a chance because he's Amen. because he's 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 real. He's powerful. Just, just, just and I'm just one person. Just and you know. <laughs> so thank you for your time. Amen. Amen.